what is going to happen with Japanese Nintendo Switch 2 support? Now, we know that things were a little bit rocky with the Nintendo Switch, with many Japanese developers and them holding back their JRPGs and other titles for the Nintendo Switch. It wasn't until a year or two in that we started to see some ports and some developers say, okay, we messed up. We made some mistakes. Bandai Namco famously pretty much said that, that hey, you know, we waited too long to jump on. So is the Nintendo Switch 2 going to share the same fate? Are there plans lined up for Japanese developers to support the system faster and more early on? In addition to that, let's talk about some new rumors on the specs of the Nintendo Switch, some other leaks that could happen, and some missing piece of information that was so popular from so many people at the beginning of the year. But once things changed up, hmm, seems like nobody wants to talk about this anymore. But don't worry, we will right here on Player Essence. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. But before we get into that, what's good everyone? OJ here, welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my Nintendo Switch and RPG videos first. I think we do it the best right here when it comes to Nintendo content on youtube so thank you guys so much for your support now let's go ahead and jump right into it because on twitter or x i put up a post that got a lot of traction a little bit of traction there and i stated that we should expect more japanese support for the nintendo switch 2 earlier expect it earlier compared to the nintendo switch back in 2017 now we know that millions of dollars obviously time is of the essence a system has a certain time period to sell and once that time goes it goes you never really make that money back you can always try to release a game and it can do good in the future but games have a shelf life some games it doesn't just sell forever like evergreen some games you really need to be there in the thick of it before certain other games come out if you want your game to do well especially if you're doing ports from other systems so companies like bandai namco Companies like Sega, Square Enix to a degree, Koei Tecmo, a lot of these companies did miss out on that early rush. Not necessarily Koei Tecmo, they were there, but Sega, Square Enix not necessarily, but there was some stuff they probably could have done a little bit better. But Bandai Namco was really the one. Atlas, obviously, they're with Sega. So what is going to happen with the Nintendo Switch 2? Now, we talked about this on my recent Player Essence Cross Nintendo podcast. You can watch the replay right here on the channel if you go to the full past live streams and click on the playlist you can check that out but we talked about this with stealth and many people in my chat and many people online felt that it's going to be pretty much the same thing that we saw with the nintendo switch they do not believe bandai namco are going to bring out some of the big guns stuff like tekken for example right or sega the yakuza games i mean these titles are just not going to be ported over to nintendo switch 2 or things just aren't going to happen there atlas isn't going to bring over stuff like persona 3 reload or the metaphor refantasio game and i have a little bit of a different opinion now here's what i think I think that the Nintendo Switch obviously coming off the failure of the Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS being a different type of system when it comes to development and when it comes to the price of games and stuff like that. So it's very different. You did not get those console level style of games. So it was a completely different category, whereas the Nintendo Switch was not in that. And they were thinking in more in line with the Nintendo Wii U. And obviously the Wii U did not do great. So a lot of companies were apprehensive. Heck, Nintendo's own company that they invest in and are part of with the Pokemon company didn't feel that the Nintendo Switch was going to be successful. So if you have one of the biggest brands in gaming say, you know what, we're not so sure about this. We're going to be apprehensive about what's going on. I don't think it's really too far-fetched to say, okay, well, other developers are going to be that way in Japan, especially after what happened with the Wii U. However, they ignored the fact that the system was a portable in addition to a home console. I don't think that they'd had good optics overall because even me, not being in their position, saw what the Nintendo Switch was doing and was like, hey, you know what? Like this system could probably take off considering it's going to be Nintendo's sole singular system going forward. And the Wii U and the 3DS combined to sell, what, 90 million almost? Pretty much there so imagine if they put all their games out on one platform now i get it obviously i'm not investing millions upon millions of dollars 
into it so it's easy when you're talking about someone else but i do feel that this time around getting to what the nintendo switch 2 is going to do i think this time around you're going to get a number of ports from these companies they are not going to miss out on that early rush now what you don't want to do which i see people say all the time is that at launch you have tekken and you have tails and you have all these different games just thrown on there where there's like 40 games at launch not everyone's going to buy those games people are just going to buy the next big 3d mario game or mario kart or whatever the case is whatever nintendo has and a lot of those are going to get pretty poor sales at launch so you have to kind of sprinkle things in as it goes along and the system builds its own identity and install base now if you do that you can pull off the impossible you do that you can pull off something incredible when it comes to japanese rpgs like tales of arise that can have a second wind with a bigger install base overall than what they had before with just xbox playstation and pc you can even do more if you port over stuff like scarlet nexus or persona 3 reload or the metaphor refantasio there's a lot of things or a lot of games more like a japanese rpgs and more action games titles that have pretty much capped out on xbox playstation pc and you can have a second life if you put effort into it now what we're hearing and we're going to talk about in just a little bit we're hearing that the nintendo switch 2 is going to have some decent specs and it's going to have an equalizer which is called the dlss which is going to help out which is reducing the load on the system to be able to run when it comes to better frame rate in addition to making the image look better even though it's not necessarily portraying that so it's almost like a little bit of video magic going on here so if you want more information on dlss i'll have a digital foundry video link for you you guys because i think some of you guys don't really understand it they think that it's some type of crazy type of thing and which it is pretty cool technology but it's exclusive to nvidia and what they do and honestly this could be the secret sauce at the nintendo switch as and we have very credible reports from Eurogamer and from VGC that yes, that demos that they showed off at Gamescom to developers, it was using DLSS. And once again, we are gonna go over some more of those specs. So I do see some of the reports that came out with Final Fantasy VII Remake just up and running on the Nintendo Switch 2, no problem whatsoever running or looking like a PS5 game. I think those reports were correct. And I think that we're gonna see some of these games that didn't come over from Bandai Namco, maybe a code vein, maybe, you know, once again, the Persona 3 Reload didn't come over from Sega, right? Some of these titles that didn't come over that would be easier to get going and cost less. You need less work. You don't need some type of super specialized team to make a Switch version of the game. Finally say, all right, let's just put it on there once things kind of slot in with various different third-party games and what Nintendo's doing first party wise. I think it all just kind of lines up and makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to get every single third-party game from every single Japanese developer and there isn't going to be any mistake or any problems whatsoever and everything's going to be perfect because sometimes people take it that way when you say hey this is what i think is going to happen it's not a hundred percent perfect everybody's going to be happy with every single thing and the specs no that's not it at all what i'm saying is that it's going to be better coming off of a success than what it was coming off of a failure with the wii u so people are going to look at it and perceive it differently and from a business perspective not want to miss out on the next big thing considering that the nintendo switch is still at this point six plus years which we're going to get into a little bit as well still dominating the japanese game industry software wise and hardware wise so that's just something i think that they're looking at the optics are there it's right in front of your face when it comes down to it and you don't have to bend over backwards to make a port like the nintendo switch is compared to xbox and playstation where you really have to have a specialized team you've got to optimize super fully it takes a lot of work to get these switch ports done considering the power gap and difference the nintendo switch 2 is going to equalize that a little bit and balance things out now let's get into that a little bit because i did allude to it We've got a little bit more specs rumors when it comes to Nintendo Switch 2. Now, according to Universo Nintendo, who my man Stealth says, you know what? He is a credible source. He's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, South American Nintendo reporter out there. And he's been right on a number of things before. He's reporting that his sources tell him that the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to have about 12 gigabytes of RAM. Obviously, we know about the ray tracing stuff that was in the Eurogamer VGC report and DLSS 3.1. Now, that is something new that was not in the original report for Eurogamer or for VGC they just said DLSS now the best DLSS that's available right now like on PCs highest end the best newest version is 3.5 
So this is using a version before that, which I think lends a little bit more credence to it. Obviously, you're not going to have the latest stuff when it comes down to it. But if you have something right before it or so, that makes sense. So 12 gigabytes of RAM DLSS uh, 3.1. And I think that's solid. Now, I went back and looked at the RAM allocations for Nintendo's past systems, right? The Wii had a very small, minuscule megabyte amount of RAM. It was pretty small, right? Then you look at like the Wii U. The Wii U had two gigabytes, one for the OS and then one gigabyte dedicated for games. You look at the Nintendo Switch, which went from, you know, two to four with one gigabyte dedicated to the OS and three or so, about three or so dedicated to video games. So I do think that, yeah, they could triple that. It's, you know, doubled over the last uh, generation or so. So could they triple that up to 12 gigabytes of RAM? It makes sense. I think that it could maybe use a couple gigabytes for the OS and the rest for gaming. If you're running stuff like DLSS and you're running stuff, potential ray tracing and you're running all these type of things, it's very possible. Now, in comparison, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 both have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, the Xbox Series S has 10 gigabytes of RAM. And I felt that Nintendo might do 8 to 10. That's what I was thinking, kind of putting it in line with the Xbox Series S, but we have to just wait and see. Now, apparently, the dev kits, this is just some of the rumor scuttlebutt that's out there, dev kits have 16 gigabytes, the consumer level will have 12, that's just, once again, dev kits always usually have more than what we get so you don't know what's happening there but yeah i would be okay if they went with 10 if they went with 12 i mean i don't know if they're gonna go with eight some people feel that's too low when it comes down to it which it could be but i'm guessing that it's going to be anywhere between 10 to 12 gigabytes of ram with all of these different stuff that Eurogamer and vgc did report on now that doesn't mean just because it has 12 gigabytes it's way stronger than the xbox series s or it's oh my god it's right as strong as the ps5 or anything like that and ram isn't the be all end all when it comes to your system there's many other things that factor into it but what i think here is that you're looking at a advancement of technology to the point to where nintendo has seen okay prices although they're high for chip counts and stuff like that the prices are more in line with what we need to do with this system now that we've got one system going forward the one thing that nintendo always had in the back of their mind is okay we have this other system that we're gonna have to support and that's gonna cost money and there's r d now that you have one system going forward you can almost kind of combine what you wanted to do between the two systems and say this is our one system we're going full force with just this this is what it's going to be so we can put that extra gigabyte or two of ram we can put that extra feature or two because we don't have to worry about some other system that we're gonna have to redo things once again and spend all of that r d and money on that so i think that this way with the nintendo switch it makes a more focused system going forward so i can believe this 12 gigabytes and right now based off of what i've heard from this guy felipe from the universo nintendo he's got a pretty good track record but once again it's a rumor so don't take it as 100 percent fact or anything like that but the creeks you know you know what i'm saying the leaks and the creeks and everything started to burst open a little bit here with these rumors and this different stuff that's happening now of course a lot of it might not be true but we're getting information from people that are credible here with vgc with the Eurogamer. once again this is a separate report with universo but he's credible as well so it's going to be very interesting how things are going forward now let's jump into the nintendo switch and what we could see heading into a potential nintendo direct so mr leaker p yoro has teased that there's new donkey kong information which we did talk about but also we're gonna get more information on that princess peach game now that's the thing that i kind of want to focus on the donkey kong stuff there's been more but i don't want to spoil or ruin it more than what it potentially could be so i'm just gonna leave out that stuff when it comes to donkey kong i am gonna talk more about the princess peach stuff because he did put up a tweet talking about princess peach he put up like some japanese writing and if you translate it with google it says more information on princess peach plus somebody asked him 
in the Twitter or X page, like, hey, will there be more information on the Peach game? And he says, yep, you know, just yep, that's it. So I do feel that this Princess Peach game is going to be a solid title. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be called, Super Princess Peach 2 or Super Princess Peach's Big Adventure or something like that. But it does seem like Princess Peach will be able to get different power suits and have different powers based off of those suits and Star Luma thingies or whatever the heck these things are that she's had in the first demo. She's going to be able to attack. She's going to be able to do different acrobatic maneuvers. She's going to be able to go to different places. It could all be a play, too, based on how everything's played out. Maybe she's just bored in the castle and they decide to put something together for her. Remember, Mario Bros. 3 is just a stage play overall. So there could be something like that with this game. Or it could be, hey, there's some big trouble going on here. Mario and Luigi are in trouble or away on vacation. And Princess Peach has to handle everything. So I'm excited for this game. I think the graphics look beautiful. It has a simplistic but clean style i think that princess peach deserves her own game it's been what a decade or so plus since we've gotten a real princess peach adventure and we don't get to use her a lot in games i mean she's used in like some of the mainline 3d mario games right like super mario 3d world and she's been in games but to have her own starring game that's something that's very rare within the mario universe so i'm actually excited for this and it makes complete sense after the whole peaches 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 you know like with the music and everybody just loving princess peach in the super mario bros movie this is absolutely brilliant on the hand of nintendo especially with the new bundles mario kart bundle coming right you're gonna see a lot of probably little girls or teenage girls that want to play or want to check out this game so i think it really expands your demographics even more it gets it into more different age groups and uh i'm excited for it too so even old people like me can be excited for a game like this because i've been playing mario since the beginning so this is pretty cool i'm looking forward to seeing more information about this uh, new Princess Peach game at a direct that should be coming sometime soon as of the time that I'm recording this video uh, All right, so let's go and get into this last topic here guys And we've got the Famitsu sales I alluded to this earlier that this is something that people wanted to talk about wanted to make videos about wanted to rub in my face And I'm sorry. I know I've done this a number of times, but it can't really be understated how messed up this was This is something that we just got to talk about because I find it really really awkward that people would talk about the Japanese sales so much and they just fade off off of it once playstation or once the system that they want to do better or whatever they feel isn't doing as well anymore but like i said rest assured we're going to talk about it right here on player essence because we've got some pretty interesting things that are going down in japan which i think will snowball into the nintendo switch too so we got the software sales we've got the hardware sales this is from august 28 2023 to september 3rd 2023 and this covers the physical retail sales in Japan, which are still predominantly the most sales that games get. Yes, digital is still there, and yes, it's a significant factor, but physical sales definitely give us a good picture of how something can do. So Pikmin 4 was the top selling game, as you guys can see right here. Another 34,240 units to then. Dory Sweep is alive and well. Pikmin is definitely a million seller in Japan and quite possibly the biggest surprise or one of the biggest surprises of the Nintendo Switch software sales run here. Pikmin continues to be at the top of the charts with its charming gameplay and that also propelled the Nintendo Switch to 83,222 units compared to the PlayStation 5 which sold 52,093 units and the Xbox series of systems that sold 6,685 units. The PS4 family sold 975 units. But the thing about this here is is that Armored Core was pretty much the only PlayStation game on the charts. The top 30 of the charts here, the top 30 is all Nintendo Switch software for the most part. You've got two games. You've got the PS4 version of Armored Core, Fires of Rubicon, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon with 10,903 units. You've got the PS5 version with 18,801 units at the second spot. So it's interesting to see here that look at all this sweep here with Switch software. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that Japanese developers are seeing this. If you really want to sell your game in Japan, kind of has to be on the Nintendo Switch. And the software numbers here for the best-selling game in japan is pretty much all nintendo switch titles until you get to like final fantasy 16 but that's even 
out of the top 30 here and nobody mentioned that that was something that a lot of people were very gung-ho about when it comes to final fantasy and potentially boosting up everything and this is the reason why switch is going to be buried when people were making fun of me and telling me that i'm a fanboy calling me names and all this different type of stuff and i was telling them yeah it's not great when it comes to final fantasy it looks like it's going to be dipping off of these top 30 and it's off of the top 30 now at this point actually being beat out by games that are years and years older than it at this point now it's still doing good probably digital there was a sale and all that it's probably doing okay in japan but at the same time you have to look at the sales numbers because at the bottom of it the legend of zelda breath of the wild only sold about 1365 units so you have to look at it in that sense as well and I think this is going to snowball into the next generation for the Nintendo Switch. If you're a developer or a publisher, you're looking at this and you're looking at the Switch, which is six years old plus, and it's still selling 80 something thousand units. Yeah, you're going to be like, OK, the Switch 2 is probably going to pick up right where the Switch left off once this system comes out, and especially with all of these games. That's why I think backwards compatibility is going to be a thing because people are going to want to play those or still buy those games and have it on the next system as well as more games come out for the Nintendo Switch 2. But I also wanted to note here that there is definitely scalping issues which once again i got flamed for online for saying that because how do you sell 50 something thousand units i've never seen this before in japan you sell 50 something thousand units and you don't have really any software in the top 30 that just seems wild that you would sell 50 thousand units plus even with digital factors kind of factored in and not have at least three games that are over 1,365 units. That doesn't seem right to me. There's scalping going on. People are buying those PS5s in Japan and shipping them off to different parts of Asia. It has to be that because this has never happened in the 10 plus year history of me covering the Japanese sales. I've never seen a system sell 50,000 units, 60,000 units, 40,000 units, 30,000 units, 50,000 units, week after week after week and not have at least four or five titles in the top 30 in sales. It just doesn't make sense. People would go in there especially with the ps5 physical edition and sell 48,000 plus units of that physical edition and then walk out with no games that makes zero sense so there's definitely some crazy scalping going on which is making the numbers look inflated in comparison to the software being sold so those are my thoughts when it comes to the japanese sales and don't worry we'll keep covering them right here on player assets because we don't stop just because we can't make some type of headline uh to try to say something so we cover the sales like we're supposed to cover them every single week for the most part whether it's in live streams or in videos so thank you guys so much for watching today i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out our other videos right here on screen like my top 25 nintendo switch games of all time and some underrated nintendo switch gems that you should check out thank you for watching we'll catch you guys for the next one peace